Like, we created this thing out of nothing, okay? Can you believe that? We created something out of freaking nothing. And then we beat the shit out of it. How sad is that? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another video. Um, I'm just gonna put some stuff in the intro, but I'll be quick. Okay, if anything that I said to you in this episode is resonating with you, I really suggest, you know, getting on a call with me because if something resonated here, imagine what could happen on a phone call where you get personalized um, feedback. And then another thing is that I'm doing a procrastination challenge where I'm hosting one and it's starting on November 1st at 6 p.m. Just wanted to remind you it's a mindset challenge and it's going to really help get to the bottom of why we're procrastinating and give you some ideas on how to stop it permanently. Okay, that's it. I just know that nobody listens to the outro so I wanted to put it in the intro. Okay, so today I really want to talk about how you may be suffocating your art. Like perhaps you're experiencing a lot of art block lately or just nothing you're creating seems to be how you like it. It's just not coming out the way you want. You're just hating everything you make. You're totally frustrated and feeling really stuck with your art. I was experiencing this a lot before the big quit of I think 2016 where I know I made an announcement on YouTube that I was gonna stop creating videos and then I essentially stopped doing art and stuff for a while and I was really around that time like really really questioning about my love for art like maybe it really wasn't for me and I really started to consider like just art as not being my career anymore. It was just not what I was going to do. And I, I was fully open to other things. I wanted to give myself like a year or something to explore other things. So yeah, so it was like a lot of art block, a lot of frustration. And here's why you may be feeling that way. Um, okay, so this might seem like a totally weird turn, but just stick with me. I have a point and I'm going to tie it back to art. So I want you to think about a very domineering, overprotective parent. There's different names for this kind of parenting. Um, in Asian culture, I think it's called tiger parenting. And then in Western culture, it's like helicopter parenting or the stage mother type of parenting where it's a parent that really, really wants to control every aspect of their children's lives, right? Like they hover like a helicopter around their children and they, you know, totally control their schedules, decide when and where they eat, what they do, how much they practice, and they have like these super high expectations for excellent and excellence and they're very, very demanding on their children, right? Like so many lessons like there's music math you know singing or in, like in the stage mother um, example it's like you know dance and then very competitive and just you know they want to do everything in their power to make sure that their children succeed in whatever thing that they're kind of going for um so this kind of parenting right this it's most probably brought out some like real top performers of children into adulthood but you're probably not surprised when you hear that like many if not most are left with a lot of emotional issues right like a lot of low self-esteem like uh, undeniable anxiety unable to take care of themselves just less self-reliant and not very like independent thinkers right and just a lot of psychological issues. And even if they are top performers, they could still have emotional issues, right? Because success does not equal happiness. Like that's been de debunked long ago because there's so many, so many freaking, um, you know, uh, scientific studies. They've done studies where success, like especially like societal standards of success, right? Like fame and money, essentially. It does not ever correlate with happiness. 
So these children of these parents are like jumping through rings of fire, you know, like these crazy obstacle courses essentially for their parents' approval. But often it's never enough, right? Like, yes, they might win some competition, they might get a good grade, they might do something amazing, but it's like, what's what's next, right? Like, they got to keep topping it. And often they're also not allowed to pursue their own interests because, yeah, some things are just considered not worthy and not respectable. So these kids aren't allowed to really fully enjoy or explore or be curious about themselves. They, they kind of have to totally contort themselves to whatever society or their parents decide is respectable to pursue um, when it comes to interests or extracurricular activities. So a defense to this kind of parenting is that they are really devoted to their children, that they really, really care about their children, which is clearly very true, right? Like, I'm not denying that at all. But I do think it goes beyond that. Like, I don't think it's just that they care. Because most, if not, yeah, most parents care. But these parents, they, it's not that just they care about their child's success. First of all, I think w one thing is that they've completely bought into that lie that success equals worth or happiness, but maybe more worth, right? Um, which we all know, totally false, right? Because how can you explain celebrities who are in and out of rehab? I mean, they have everything that we would consider as successful, right? Like the fame, the money, and, and for some reason, they're totally, absolutely miserable. Like nobody who believes that they are worthy or happy abuses drugs and alcohol, right? So essentially with that logic, they believe their child is not worthy until they prove their worth. And then on, on another layer, which I think is the more insidious, I guess, layer, is that their child's success is a reflection of the parent's worthiness. And here's the thing, guys. We do some messed up shit when it comes to our worthiness. Like... You know, if you believe your worthiness is on the line and it's completely determined by how your child does in life, it makes so much sense why these parents act the way they act, right? Often resorting to violence and emotional abuse in order to control their children. But yeah, if you're worthy, if you really believe that like your child was a reflection of your own worthiness, it makes sense. Um, okay, so think about that kind of parenting, right? Like who sees their child as this barometer for their own worthiness. Many of us artists do the exact same thing to our art. Like, we created this thing out of nothing, okay? Can you believe that? We created something out of freaking nothing. And then we beat the shit out of it. How sad is that? Right? Like... Or, or if we don't beat the shit out of it because it's this inanimate object, then we beat the shit out of ourselves. Like, we beat the shit out of the creator. Um, and then there are some things that, like, we're so curious and dying to create, but we stifle it because of what other people might think. Right? Because we don't think it's going to get a lot of likes or we don't think that it's going to be popular or we think that it's, like, it's, like, not respectable enough. Right? Like... It's not real art. So then we just stifle that because we are so afraid of what other people think. And, you know, if we're afraid about what other people think, like if there's something we're afraid of, it means that we believe it in some way about ourselves. It means that we think it in the first place. We just don't want confirmation. So um, let's, I really want to ask this question to you, or at least I want to pose this question to you. Would you rather love your work or be successful like really think about it would you rather choose to feel loving towards your work or dislike your work but be successful by society standards right in the sense that you have money and you have followers or something like that where then you kind of have the fame so really answer that right okay would you rather love your work or be successful? And if you'd rather dislike your work and gain success, why? Like, why would you decide to 
not like your work? Why, why is success above that? Like, if we thought about a parent, right, who doesn't love their children until they prove to them that they are worthy of love, most of us would think that's terrible, horrible, abusive parenting, right? Or that's just like really, that's a really crappy like parenting relationship, child-parent relationship. And clearly, it's the, it's the parent's inability to love their children, right? Who's at fault? Like, it's the parent's fault for not being able to love their child. It's not the child's fault, right? Like it's completely on the parent. So then why would we do that to our own work? Like we, we look at our work, the ones that we don't think are, you know, don't look as good. And then we deem the work as being the problem, right? Like, oh, this is not good work. I don't like what I drew. And so I don't love my work. And, and again, we're blaming the artwork that we created for our lack of ability to love it. When really, it's not the work's fault, right? It's, it's the way we choose to think about our work. And so anyway, what I'm trying to say is like, um, I think we should love our work no matter what it looks like. And, you know, obviously the solution to helicopter parenting isn't then to go to the complete extreme opposite where we coddle children and leave them totally unsupervised and they get to do whatever the hell they want. Like, you know, we can love children. I'm, I'm not a parent, but um, I think I can relate in a way where, you know, we can love children, right? We can, we can show love, but at the same time still teach manners, right? <laughs> still have rules, still have expectations. So it's the same thing. We can love our work and stand strong in our own worthiness, right? Like we don't expect our work to define our worthiness. And then we can still criticize our work and still improve our work from a place of love. And actually, that's where we most likely are going to make improvements. So essentially, what I'm trying to say is like, you know, a lot of us, really are totally looking at our work for and we're totally dependent on our work for our worthiness and then no wonder so many of us feel like we want to quit like we're not having fun anymore and we feel totally stuck and suffocated but it's because we're suffocating our own art when we are totally dependent on it like we should we i think we should just love it right like no matter what no matter what, because we created something out of nothing. So I really want to offer that to you, that to love your work no matter what. Even if there's some things about it that you don't like, that's fine, right? And you can improve, you can learn from it. Um, but to not be dependent on it for your worth, for your worthiness. Because you're already worthy no matter what. You just get, You just have to decide that. Okay, guys. So thank you so much for listening. I hope that was helpful. I would really love to hear what you think of this. I found this really helpful, like this kind of analogy. I don't want to be that kind of parent, quote unquote, on my art. Um, and so yeah, I hope it was helpful. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.